Bible class, we are studying solving equations with variables on both sides today. This is section 2.5. We have already studied two-step equations, and then we studied multi-step equations. Now, 2.5 is going to have variables, typically x, on both sides of the equation. So there'll be an x over here and an x over there, and we need to get them on the same side. So here's an example. As you can see, there's an x on this side and an x on this side of the equal sign. So what we need to do is we need to figure out what value of x makes this true. So I have some hints over here. Uh, when you have an equation with variables on both sides like this, first, you're going to try to simplify the left side as much as possible and the right side as much as possible. Now, nothing is like over here, 7 minus 8x. This is a constant and this has an x. Same thing here, this is, has an x and this is a constant. So there's nothing like on the same side of the equal sign right now. Once you're done with that, you're gonna move the variables to one side and the constants to the other. So the x term is gonna be on one side of the equal sign and the, the thing without an x is going to be on the other. And it doesn't really matter which side you, you uh, bring the x's to. One thing that we could do is we could add an 8x here. Right, we have a minus 8x. The way to get rid of a minus 8x to bring it to the other side would be to add 8x. And if you do that to one side, you also need to do it to the other. Now we would have just a plain old 7 because those cancel, and this is equals 12x minus 17. Now we have to bring the constant to the other side. Right, We want x on one side and the thing without an x to the other. So we're going to add 17, add 17. 24 is equal to 12x, so x is equal to 2. So that was one option for us to do. We could have subtracted out of the 8x to both sides. So instead, we could have brought the 4x to the other side. Currently, this is a positive 4x. The way to move a positive 4x would be to subtract 4x. If you do it to one side, you have to do it to the other. Those cancel, you'd have negative 17 is equal to 7 minus 12x. Now, this is the side that the x is going to be on, so we have to move the 7. The way to move a positive 7, right? The 7 is positive. You need to subtract 7. If you do it to one side, you have to do it to the other. Now, I have a negative 12x because those cancel is equal to negative 24. Divide by negative 12, and you get 2. So notice we got the same answer either way. Um, this might have seemed a little bit more difficult because it had more negatives in it. So you can be strategic in choosing which side to bring things to. Another example here, uh, going back to our steps, kind of our hints, we can distribute this one-fourth in to... Uh, simplify this right side first as much as we possibly can. Distributing a 1 fourth times 16 would give us 4x, and 1 fourth times 60 would be plus 15. Now this looks just like the last problem. We have x's uh, on both sides. We want to get them to the same side. This is a positive 4x, so to move it, I will subtract 4x. And if I do that on one side, I have to do it to the other. 4x minus 4x, those cancel. So over here, we just have 15. And over here, we have 5x minus 5. Now I have a two-step equation. Add 5 to both sides. x is equal to 4. Here's a couple more examples. Why don't you guys pause it here and give it a try, and then I'll go over it here in a second. You're going to notice both of these examples have variables on both sides of the equation. Let's give them a try. So I have a minus 3k over here. I need to get the k's to the same side, so I'm going to add a 3k to both sides. Those cancel, and you get 9 is equal to 17 plus 1k, or just k. 
Now, it's worth noting that you could have decided to move this plus, you could have moved this minus 2k to the other side by adding 2k. You'd still going to get the same answer. So if you did that, that's fine. Now, k has the 17 on the same side as it. That 17 is positive. So if you move it, I would subtract 17. And 9 minus 17 is negative 8 is equal to k. Next example, uh, I can distribute this two-thirds in. Two-thirds times 6 would be 4y plus, and two-thirds times 15 would be 10. Now notice I've got the variable on both sides. I need to move them to the same side. I'm going to move this 4y to this side. I move that 4y, it's a positive 4y now. I would move it by subtracting 4y. So 4y minus 6 is equal to 10. Add 6 to both sides. 4y is equal to 16. So y is equal to 4. Let's talk about this kind of big picture for a second. You guys, by this point, should realize what y equals 4 is actually trying to say. What we mean by y is equal to 4 is 4 is the only number that when you plug it in for y here and here, both sides would be the same thing. We can verify this pretty easily. If I plug in a 4 here, 8 times 4 is 32, and 32 minus 6 is 26. I should be able to do that over here as well. 6 times 4 is 24. And 24 plus 15 would be 39. And 39 times 2 thirds is also 26. So that worked. Okay. If I had, let's just hypothetically make something up. If I had thought, done this problem and got 1 as my answer and tried the solution of 1, when I plug 1 in, it's not going to be true because only 4 works. 4 is my answer, not 1. So when I plug in 1, let's just try it for fun. Plugging in 1 here, 8 minus 6 is 2. And if I plug 1 over here, 6 plus 15 is 21. And 21 times 2 thirds would be 14. Well, that doesn't equal each other, right? 1 times 2 and 1 times 14. But when I plugged 4 in, they both said 26. They were equal to one another. So what's the point of me pointing this out? Well, there are some types of equations that might look like something like this that have no solution. Essentially, no matter what you plug in for the variable, it'll never be a true statement. Similarly, there are some types of equations that have infinite solutions. Essentially, no matter what I plug in for k, it would be a true statement. So we're going to start looking at those odd examples here. There are are three possible scenarios for these are called linear equations there are three possible situations we could have one solution everything that we've looked at so far has had one solution this problem here had a solution of negative eight this problem here had a solution of four those were the numbers that made the equation true so it's possible to have one solution it's possible to have no solutions or it's possible to have infinite solutions it's not possible for two linear or for a linear equation like this to have three solutions or two solutions. It's only one, zero, or infinite. Let's look at some examples. This is one of those types. Okay. If you guys were to try to solve this problem, your first step would be to distribute the three, and you would have three x is equal to three x plus twelve. Right, because you distribute the 3 and you get 3x is equal to 3x plus 12. Now, if we put our thinking caps on here, we could see that this is never going to work. The right side of this equal sign is always going to be 12 greater than the left side. Right? If I plug in 1, I have 3 equals 3 plus 12. That's not true. 3 doesn't equal 3 plus 12. If I plug in 2, I would have 6 is equal to 6 plus 12. That's not true. Right? This is always 12 greater. So there is no answer that would make this a true statement. 
if we were continuing to go through the process that we had outlined previously in these last couple of slides, you'd say, hey, there's a 3x. I want to move it to the other side. So I'm going to subtract 3x, right? If I do that to one side, I do that to the other. Well, what happens here? This cancels, this cancels. What you end up with is 0, right? Because 3x minus 3x is 0 is equal to 3x minus 3x is 0 plus 12. This type of statement here should make you go, aha, right? This is no solution. Never works, right? 0 does not equal 12. Therefore, there is no value of x that makes this a true statement. A couple more examples, thinking along those lines. Here we have 7w on one side, 8w on the other side. We need to get them to the same side. Once again, I don't particularly care which side you bring the w's to. You're just going to put the, the variable on one side, subtract 7w here. If I do that on one side, I have to do it to the other. Those cancel, and I get 1 is equal to 8w minus 7w is 1w, or just w. Once again, I'm trying to solve for w. w has a plus 1 happening to it, so I'm going to subtract 1 on both sides. And what you get is 0 is equal to w. So this is kind of a weird example because it's not a infinite solution or a no solution. Instead, what we're saying is that 0 is the solution. There's one solution here. There's one number that makes it true. And that number is 0. We could test 0. If you plug in 0 here, 7 times 0 is 0, plus 1 is 1. If you plug in 0 there, 8 times 0 is 0, plus 1, 1. 0 does work. We're not saying it doesn't have a solution. We're saying 0 is the solution. What about this guy here? 9z plus 12 is equal to 9 times z plus 3. What you guys should do is distribute that 9. You have 9z plus 12 is equal to 9z plus 27. Currently, we have the variable z on both sides. Let's bring them to the same side. I'm going to subtract 9z there to bring it to this side. Well, what happens when I do that? 9z minus 9z cancels. 9z minus 9z cancels. What do we have left? 12 is equal to 27. Let's both say 27. Okay. That is not a true statement. 12 does not equal 27. So this, once again, is no solution. I didn't have a an infinite solution variety, but what an infinite solution what it would look like is if you cancel these out and you got 12 is equal to 12. Okay, the z's cancel each other out and you've got a true statement. I will just make a quick example here. If you had 2x minus x plus 4 is equal to x plus 4, for example. Okay. Uh, you're going through and trying to simplify this. Well, we know 2x minus x. Your first step would be to simplify that. That's just 1x or x. x plus 4 is equal to x plus 4. Well, through, I know you probably can identify it's infinite now, but our next step would be to bring the variable to the same side. So you'd subtract x here. If you subtract x there, you have to do it to the other side you end up with 4 is equal to 4. That's like this, except a true statement. That tells you it has infinite solutions. So this has been solving equations with variables on both sides, and it also introduced infinite solutions and no solutions. Let me know if you guys have any questions.